This is a brutally honest review of Selfless by Hiram, the new skincare line that aims to create social change while having gentle yet effective ingredients. And apparently this line is built for everyone. I'm going to speak openly about my experience on my oily acne prone skin with these products, some of the controversies, share with you my before and afters, some of my concerns and not so favorite products, as well as some that I do appreciate and for what reasons. So. Right off the bat, let's get a few things out of the way. This is going to go one of two directions. Greenwashing, overpriced, ineffective stuff that another influencer just slapped their name on and is trying to make a quick buck. Or truly efficacious, affordable, impact-driven skincare that is going to change the industry. Now what's interesting about this line is that I don't see this as a traditional celebrity skincare line. This is, yes, Selfless by Hiram, but it is powered by the Inky List. I don't think a lot of people understand that Hiram is a co-founder along with Mark and Colette, who do own and have founded the Inky List among other products. I've taken partnerships with the Inky List in the past before, but I genuinely love their brand. They are affordable and efficacious, but there are a few products from the Inky List that I don't like. And when it comes to Hiram, I've never met him in person. I've always appreciated his content. He's always been super kind to me on social media, but I'm going to do my best to remove all bias from both my experience with the Inky List as well as Hiram as a person. And look at these as if this were just another skincare line that has fallen into my lap. And if you're new, why should you care about my opinion? Great question. I'm a medical esthetician who's been in the industry for 10 years. I'm the acne big sister, which means yes, my skin type is oily and acne prone. That is something I struggle with. I also don't like to overpay for skincare if I don't have to. I normally won't pay more than $100 for a product, but I have been known to splurge and spend 80 to 90 on some of them. So this is when I got to testing. Now, what do I love and what do I actually dislike? This is the Centella and Green Tea Cleanser for $20 and they say that it helps to fight climate change. Initially, I thought that every single product was donating to a different cause, but I found out through promotional videos and through the packaging on the products that they actually have two charities that they're partnering with, and they are donating specific amounts from each product to those charities. This one happens to benefit climate change, and you actually do get a really good amount. This is five fluid ounces. This is definitely the largest bottle here. It's Centella and green tea, and when using this on my oily prone skin, at first I wasn't sure if it was giving me a full cleanse. I was very skeptical as to whether or not this would break down makeup. It seemed to clean my skin well, but as Hiram loves, it was definitely very, very gentle and fragrance-free. I would say that this is almost comparable to the Pyongyang Yule Acne Cleanser, but for non-acne purposes. It is very, very gentle. Uh, it's a little bit of a mild lather, and I did try this out on mascara and brow products, and it did actually seem to work. Um, with one cleanse, no double cleanse, it did clean my face, but it did not leave me feeling stripped or irritated, which was really refreshing. I was not expecting it to work this well. It is a nice gel cleanser and um, it really did grow on me. When it comes to the ingredients, they're actually pretty basic, relatively non-irritating. I don't think this is for everyone, but for my oily prone skin, it was okay and it didn't leave me feeling stripped. Centella, we all know Hiram loves it. It is tiger grass. It is really great for its antioxidant and soothing properties. And even green tea has some catagens, a little bit of caffeine that could be beneficial to the skin. As your acne big sister, it is literally my job to give you honest advice and information about what I do and don't think of products. Some of the controversy around this is that is the Centella or green tea even add an adequate amount? Like, is it even working on the skin? This is a cleanser. <laughs> Cleansers, even with antioxidants, stay on the skin for 60 seconds to three minutes and you wash them down the drain. I found this cleanser to be pretty enjoyable. I found it to be good. Is it worth $20? We'll talk about that in a second. It is a cleanser and the antioxidants in here are going to be rinsed off your face. So you need them to do the work while they are on your face. And so far, this is what that did for me. Then we get into the serums. Hiram did not release a toner within this line and the serums initially, the packaging kind of turned me off. Let's start with the Mandelic Acid and Rice Bran. The whole thing with the packaging is that it's really hard to get product out of here. And it wasn't until later I found out you have to squeeze it from the top. I actually think this is a bit strategic. These are only one fluid ounce, so there's not a lot in there. And even when you feel like you've squeezed out a ton, you're getting a very small amount. From a perspective of waste, I think that's a great thing. It's helping us use less of a product that maybe we're already overusing. But simultaneously, through my testing process, I wonder if using less of an amount led to me seeing less results than I would have with other products. While I was kind 
kind of on the fence about the cleanser and then thought, meh, it's fair. Maybe give it a seven, maybe six, seven out of 10. This Mandelic and Rice brand I was actually a fan of. This is a really nice gentle exfoliant with polyhydroxy acids. It didn't overly irritate my skin. Now Hiram is all about the non-irritation and this was kind of marketed to be safe for all skin types. I did find that on my more sensitive days, this did have a feeling on my skin. It wasn't completely sting free. Was my skin being overdone by something else? Was it the sunscreen I was using in my routine? Is it because I was kind of switching up different products? That is all very possible. Out of all of the exfoliators out there, I'm very used to like the Paula's Choice BHA. This is definitely on par, if not a little bit gentler. The main ingredients in here are mandelic acid and rice bran. Mandelic acid is an awesome AHA, an alpha hydroxy acid, so it works to exfoliate the skin. This also has polyhydroxy acids. Polyhydroxy acids are larger molecules, and even this mandelic acid is a larger AHA. And because of that, these kind of sit on top of the skin and gently exfoliate just the outer layers. So this isn't penetrating super deep. And for someone who is new to chemical exfoliation, I think it's a really good thing. Rice Bran also has beta glucans. It is very soothing, which is obviously a theme within this line. And I like that they marketed it for night. Now what's interesting and not really touted front and center is that this also has a small amount of salicylic acid. So mandelic acid and AHA is water soluble and salicylic acid and BHA is oil soluble. Even though it has one of the largest molecules, it penetrates into skin deep because our skin has a lot of oils, that sebum that our pores make. And together, this is a very gentle AHA BHA blend. This also had some bonus ingredients such as gluconolactone, such as phytic acid, and of course niacinamide, which Hiram loves. And I felt like this is a really good one. The retinol and rainbow algae is one of Hiram's favorites, and I love retinol in my skincare routine. This rainbow algae sounded super amazing, so I thought I was going to love this one. And this one actually slightly disappointed me. I've only had a little bit over a week and a half to try this, but this was not a slam dunk for me. I do like that this one helps to fight climate change, but when it comes to the ingredients and how it worked on my skin, it is this white, almost slightly kind of off-white color, and it does seem to absorb into skin well. It is an encapsulated retinol, which does help with stability, and some encapsulated retinol can actually do a slow release throughout the day. And this also has this rainbow algae, and I was like, cool, but what is it? I haven't heard of rainbow algae in skincare. I know that there are many different types of algae that have been used in beauty products, but like, what are the benefits of this? What does it actually do? And if it's on the front of a product, does it actually work? When I looked it up, I did find an article touting some of the benefits and some of the things that this ingredient could potentially do. So as according to this article, this Cystosteria tamariscofolia, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, is actually an algae that grows underwater and its spines kind of have this rainbow appearance, which is why it's called rainbow algae. The article mentioned that this ingredient does something to the melanosomes when they are being absorbed by keratinocytes. They were stating that this somehow impacts the pathway of keratinocytes when they absorb melanosomes and therefore led to a brightening of skin. And I'm like, okay, well, is this a tyrosinase inhibitor? Like how exactly does it work? And as according to this article, it wasn't super clear. It just seems that it somehow inhibits that pathway so that when your skin creates pigment, it doesn't really stick around. It did say that at a concentration of 1.5% over one week of use, that pigmentation was reduced. This was, I believe, a study that was funded by whoever that manufacturer was. So do I trust it 100%? Absolutely not. I don't consider this a medical ingredient. It's not meant to treat or diagnose disease either. Um, but simultaneously, I don't hate it in this product. Now, if you're a skin intellectual, a sister, and if you've watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that retinoids are the gold standard in dermatology. They are for a reason. And that actually brings us into some controversy behind this product. One of the dermatologists that I know had an issue with the way this was marketed and said it was touted as being a new kind of retinol that does everything different. It helps with acne, with fine lines, with wrinkling, with scarring, with hyperpigmentation. And this person's dermatological subjective opinion was, yeah, that's what all retinoids do. I don't actually mind that it, those benefits are being promoted, I think that's really accurate. This is encapsulated in phospholipids and it does have squalane. And so it does feel very nice on the skin. Now they don't tap this on the front, but it's also got tranexamic acid. Again, if you are a skin intellectual who is subscribed, Exactly, exactly. Then you know that it's been used in emergency medicine for gunshot wounds, for hemorrhaging and excessive bleeding, and even for menstrual bleeding. And we've been seeing it pop up in skincare as an anti-pigmentation or kind of a brightening ingredient. And it does work really well, and it's really stable in this formula. I was really excited about this because Hiram is constantly talking about how much he loves it. The ingredients looked pretty good, but when I was actually using this, I, I don't know if I saw a lot of benefit. I don't know the percentage of retinol in here. I think it's 0.2 or 0.12 or 
0.32%. Retinol has been shown to be efficacious at less than 0.1%. And you don't have to have more to be better. But simultaneously, for the price of this, which is one of the more expensive products from the line, at $30, I just didn't see major results with this like I thought I would. And maybe it was my expectations, but I was actually kind of disappointed with this one. When squeezing it out, you don't get a lot of product out. And then by the time you do, that's a very small amount of retinol. And remember that retinol needs to be transformed by your skin into retinaldehyde and then again into retinoic acid where it can actually be used and bind to the RAR and RXR receptors to help you grow new skin cells at a faster rate. So that is really important. And if there's not a lot being applied, is it doing that as diligently? When I look at this retinol for the price, it says it right on the package powered by the inky list like I look at the inky list retinol and I see the inky list retinol and for me I love it uh, it's less expensive it seems to be a little bit more potent it absorbs into my skin better and I like what it do and it's easier to get out of the package I've recommended the inky list retinol to other people I would choose the inky list retinol over this one and I really wanted to love this I'm sad that I didn't love it as much I'm used to something that is a little bit more either way I was not the cosmetic chemist on this obviously mark at the inky list was because that is literally his job but but also as an acne sufferer, I am used to higher potency and more efficacious retinoids. And this actually, I think, played into some of the breakouts that I did experience, which we're going to talk about in just a minute when I talk about like my final results and opinions. Maybe it was my expectations. I think it's a good, really great beginner retinoid, but this isn't something that I would go back for again. Then we get to the salicylic acid seek help serum. This is $24 and this one helps to fight climate change. At first, I loved the ingredients and I hated the stickiness. Then, as I used it a little bit more, I realized why it was sticky, and it's because I was using too much. Because I couldn't get any out of it, I was over squeezing it out and just piling it onto my skin. And yes, if you use too much, this gets a little bit sticky. I think it also combines with something in the moisturizer that makes it sticky. But when I was actually using the right amount, oh my god, this is not the most potent salicylic acid product out there, like by no means. But if you are looking for a gentle, non-drying, little acne boost fighting period breakout type of thing oh my god is this good it doesn't leave the skin stingy I understand I think it's a half of a percentage of salicylic acid or less but overall it actually feels really nice on the skin I do like that it has the sea kelp in it the sea kelp from this product was harvested in California which was really cool to hear about um, and overall my skin really did like this now this also has some other key ingredients which I wish that they almost spoke about a little bit more this has niacinamide and succinic acid and you know that one of my all-time favorite products from the inky list is their succinic acid acne treatment. I at first thought that this was maybe like a repackaged or like slightly redone version of that from the inky list, but that could not be farther from the truth. This is actually very different. The succinic acid from the inky list has salicylic acid, which we love, as well as sulfur to actually fight the acne. And then succinic acid has been shown to disrupt the Krebs or TCA cycle, the citric acid cycle. And if you throw a wrench in that entire process, you can actually get the process to go backward or you could stop it from happening altogether. Now this has succinic acid, but it is very different. It is not green. It is a liquid whereas the other one is more of a paste and the inky lists one like it actually kind of balls up on skin if you use too much of it and this one I did not find to do that at all it absorbs really well really nicely and this actually has niacinamide too which Hiram loves <laughs> this product really blew me away I thought this was super cool and once I learned to use the right amount it soaked in so nicely to my skin and I wouldn't say that it cleared my acne I actually broke out after using some of these products which we'll talk about in a second but I do think this is one of the products that actually helped I think this is made for young teenagers who are struggling with acne that is not severe or cystic. This has some phenomenal skin supporting ingredients and this is probably one of my favorite products from the entire line. Then we get into the moisturizer, the niacinamide and maracuja, maracuja um, one and it supports health equality. This moisturizer I had really high expectations for and I thought I was going to love it but I was not such a fan. Maracuja or maracuja oil is something that I've used from Tarte Cosmetics and it has been one of my favorite oils from Tarte Cosmetics cosmetics from years ago. It's technically derived from passion fruit, has a small amount of antioxidants, um, but I don't actually believe it has a ton of vitamin C. And it's basically an antioxidant infused oil, which yes, in this product kind of helps to add some slip to the skin, adds a little bit of a nice glow. But of course, products are not just their ingredients. Products are 
the combination of all of those ingredients and how they work as a sum together. So what else is in here? Obviously niacinamide. This also has propendiol, some different seed butters, and it actually has a couple of different olive ingredients. It does have olive leaf extract. I'm not sure why. This does have ethyl olivate and matacasicide. Now, most people wouldn't recognize this from the ingredients list, but it's actually that tiger grass, that centella asiatica that Hiram knows and loves. So this does have, I think, a little bit of an antioxidant boost inside of it as well. There are some chelating agents in here. There are some humectants that kind of hold water into the skin. This moisturizer is made for day and night use, and it's supposed to be for everyone. I have oily, acne-prone skin, and I thought I was going to love this, because again, I love maracuja or maracuja oil. But I actually used this. Um, this was not a win for me. It did absorb really nicely into skin, and it does come really nicely kind of out of the package, but I don't actually feel like it's super hydrating. It kind of absorbs and then just doesn't do much. I almost feel like I have to apply another moisturizer over the top. And again, I am oily and acne prone, so I don't normally need to do that. I also do not usually tend to gravitate towards really occlusive moisturizers. I like things that allow my skin to breathe or that layer nicely under sunscreen. Even when I was using this, I found that I could get away with the serums and sunscreen and didn't even really see a difference when I used this. And even at night, I felt like I liked a sleeping mask better. For 1.7 fluid ounces, not bad. Um, it's just not probably something that I would purchase again. Out of all of the products, I felt like this didn't really have any, you know, amazing ingredients. This was my personal preference, but this is not one that I would purchase again. Now, out of all of this, there's still more, like my befores and afters, some controversy, but what is missing from this routine? Obviously sunscreen. I believe the Inky List has a sunscreen. I haven't been able to try it because it's not available here in the USA. I know that Hiram is working on a sunscreen. They have teased that before. He has said 2022, but it might actually be out sooner. Very excited to see. But so far, I think that's what's really missing from this routine. I found that these products did layer well together, but on some nights my skin did get a little bit pilly. And that was on the nights in the beginning when I was overusing the salicylic acid and sea kelp. All of these products I think have niacinamide under 5 or 10%, but we do know that niacinamide in higher amounts, like especially over 15%, it can get really gummy on the skin. I just hate that. And I think that the niacinamide that's in a lot of these products was starting to gum up on my skin and it wasn't bad, but you could kind of feel it and you could kind of see it like coming off in little squigglies on the skin. The packaging was probably done on purpose so that you couldn't squeeze out too much and it wouldn't get sticky or you couldn't overdo it. But that was something that I didn't like. Now what I do love about the packaging is that it is really cute. It holds in your hand really well. At first I was like, oh, well, I see what they're doing. They're selling one ounce. Like it's hard to squeeze out. They're making it last longer. So you feel like you're getting more value when you're not. I don't actually think that's true. I think that it's actually really nice that we're using a decent amount of skincare products. I know that we often overuse skincare products. My only concern is that if I saw a lack of really beneficial results, was it because I was using such a small amount of my favorite products, which happened to be the serums? Now, what I do love is that there was a focus on sustainability. Let's talk about being selfless. Is launching a skincare line the most selfless thing to do? Again, taking any personal bias as much as I can out of the conversation. No, it is not very selfless to launch a skincare line. But at the end of the day, people need hygiene products. And there are no other brands or very few brands that are doing so much for the environment. We're trying to raise awareness on social change. And I think that is really important. I was actually telling Hiram on the call that he told me about this entire launch. I was saying like, I hope this is going to change the industry. I hope this is going to cause other brands to see this and to step up. I understand that large conglomerates and corporations like L'Oreal and CeraVe are financially driven. I get that. But I hope that they're going to see this and it's going to be like a case study and they're gonna be like, wow, actually giving back to the environment or donating to charity sells. We're gonna start incorporating that. Is it just capitalism veiled in philanthropy and virtue signaling? Yeah, quite possibly, but I think that that's better than not doing it at all. And at least it's a step and a push in the right direction. Let's talk about some of those criticisms as well, because I think that's healthy to address. Uh, if you guys didn't put it in my comment section, I wouldn't have seen it. But one of those things was about the recycling of the products. When I first got these, I was so excited that they were all recyclable and that this was made of sugar cane. I've never seen something done like that before. We have one very intellectual beautiful butterfly named Megan and she is super into sustainability like she gets it and she was saying that even though this is made of sugar cane is it really that recyclable and I'm like okay yeah you're right like it's made of sugar cane but where do I put it do I compost it do I bring it to the recycling center because it's sugar cane will the recycling even take it it is labeled as a two slash four I don't know what that means and I am not the expert in sustainability so I want to know from Shell Bisley but I think that for people who want their money to go towards things that they believe in most people are 
are going to purchase personal hygiene products anyways, why don't you do that with ones that actually do their best to make a difference? For the price, uh, these are small. I will admit I thought that it was going to be less expensive knowing that Hiram really hates overpriced products and knowing that the Inky List is able to make such great products at inexpensive amounts. I thought that these were going to be less expensive. The price was kind of sticker shock but again I am someone who has spent $80 on a facial oil and I am okay with that personally but I, I don't actually hate the pricing even though they are very tiny. I don't think people realize how much it costs to donate or to actually make sustainable products. Recycled paper is more expensive than non-recycled paper, which is absolutely insane. The other thing is the transparency. I love that they are open and honest about where they're getting some of these ingredients. However, they are not as open and honest as they could be about all of the ingredients. And it's true. It's like, okay, well, where do you get all of the ingredients? And obviously the Inky List, Hiram, they're not going to expose that because it would literally give away their trade secrets. If you give away the formulation and the sourcing, it's literally giving away everything. <laughs> and um, I understand from a business perspective why that doesn't make sense. Based on the price, who is this exactly for? I thought that this would be for Hiram's demographic, which is Gen Z on TikTok. I love that Gen Z cares so much about the environment and social good. I as well feel very aligned to that. And again, I hope this sparks a ton of pressure from other larger conglomerates in the industry to step it up. But based on the price, seeing this is a little bit more expensive, I wonder, you know, it's always easier to label something as higher and discount it. So I wonder if that's going to happen. I also know that this is sold at Sephora, not Ulta. I'm really happy that this is available internationally in so many different countries. I know that Sephora Sephora tends to have more higher priced items. So again, for me and my budget, I'm actually not super mad about uh, the pricing. And I do think that this is made for Hiram's audience. I think that the ideal person who would buy this line is someone who's starting a skincare routine for the first time. Someone who doesn't necessarily want to know all of the ingredients or how they work or the science behind them, but kind of trusts that this maracuja oil is going to give an antioxidant benefit or that this first introduction to retinol is going to be a good one for their skin. I do think it's relatively non-irritating, of course, uh, with any actives, there are going to be some people who get sensitivity. There are going to be some people who break out and like blame Hiram. Fight over stuff that actually matters. I think this is a really gentle line and especially for teens or young adults who want to make social impact with their money, who want to use something that is efficacious but not overly stripping. Is it the most potent stuff in the world? No, but like, is it pretty good? Actually, yeah. I was really a fan of these. Uh, definitely the salicylic acid one. This is supposedly made for anyone. And if it's made for everyone, is it really made for anyone? Because I have oily prone, acne prone skin and a product that's made for everyone is not going to take care of my acne prone needs. But simultaneously, if someone has super sensitive skin, like I, I don't know if the mandelic acid and rice bran and the salicylic acid together are really gonna be good for them. Is it sensitive skin friendly? Yes, probably. It is definitely one of the better fragrance-free options on the market. But is it completely, absolutely perfect for everyone? Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> I get that it's made for everyone, but I wish that they were a little bit more specific about who. To the controversy, um, there is some controversy. Is this really greenwashing, you know, just kind of veiled in selflessness? I don't believe so. One of my personal concerns is that we don't know how much is being donated. Would I like to see that a little bit more? Yeah, but is it an absolute deal breaker for me? No. There were some people in my comment section worried about like medical data on maracuja oil, maracuja oil. I don't know. It's from passion fruit. It's an antioxidant rich oil. There's not a ton of studies on it, but is that going to stop me from using it and enjoying it? No. If the formula is not right for me, then okay. Some people didn't like that the green tea seemed to be like a low amount because it was under phenoxyethanol. That is not tried and true. Yes, an ingredients list is important, but it doesn't tell you everything. Phenoxyethanol needs to be at under 2%. So usually anything under phenoxyethanol will be at under 2%, but remember, under that magical mark, brands can mix things around in whatever order they want. So they could put phenoxyethanol very last, even if it is at 2%. And there was also some drama about it being a complex. Dude, complexes are used in skincare all the time. And of all the things that people are picking apart at this, my personal response is like, okay, like, we could be upset, but like, argue about things that matter. <laughs> is this perfect? No, but neither is anything. Like literally nothing is perfect. I think that they covered a lot of bases. I think that a lot of thought and love was put into this line. And this has been in the works for quite a while and kept very, very secret. And um, I think it shows from the amount of work that has been put into this and the amount of care that really has been. There's a little bit more because again, some of these products actually broke me out. Let's let's talk about that too. So here's a photo of my after skin. I have have taken advice from dermatologists and doctors and medical science to say you should be switching your products up every four weeks to every six weeks. Like your skin goes through cycles and you need to make sure that it's not a hormonal period breakout or that you're not just purging. This could be purging on my skin since I'm 
only about a week and a half in, but I do believe some of these products broke me out. But hear me out. The skincare that I was using before I just dropped my routine to try this skincare by Hiram was made for acne prone skin. It had a higher amount of retinoids, it had higher amounts of salicylic acid. I am acne and blemish prone. I don't know if this set of products caused me to break out, if it is purging. I have a very diligent skincare routine with potent acne fighting actives. If I stop using those acne fighting actives, I'm gonna break out a little bit more. These are gentle products. I don't think these were strong enough for me. And I think that that's why I am experiencing a couple of breakouts. So what does this mean for you? If you are someone who is purchasing products, if you are someone who is young, wants your money to matter, if you are interested in fragrance-free, relatively gentle skincare, I think this is going to be a slam dunk for you. If you want to learn more about your ingredients, I think this is a really good gateway. But the Inky List, I almost feel like, explains things a little bit better. And Hiram's line right now is a really great introduction for teens to young 20-somethings who want something that is gentle, efficacious, and really good introduction. I hope that they're going to add not only a sunscreen, but more things down the line. And if you fall into that category, I think it's really worth a try. Again, on my skin, the serums were a slam dunk, the cleanser grew on me, and then the moisturizer and the retinol were a little bit disappointing in my personal opinion. Overall, like how does this line compare to other things? It reminds me a little bit of K-Beauty. It reminds me a little bit of Clear Star from Dermalogica, it is good. And like when you compare this to Cetaphil, I prefer this over Cetaphil any day. When you compare this to Dermalogica even, there are some products in here that I would definitely choose Dermalogica over, but there are some products in here that I would definitely choose over Dermalogica. You can have really great and really bad products from the same brand. When it comes to the packaging and the social impact, I think they're trying hard. As mentioned earlier, I hope this is a lesson to the industry to step it up because we want to put our money where our morals are. And I think this is a really good push in the right direction. I love that it is vegan and cruelty free. And as your acne big sister, I would say that if you're on the fence about it and if you have the money, definitely stick with one of these two if you are a pimple person like myself. Overall, I am going to continue testing these. I am waiting for new launches. I wanna hear what you think. And if you haven't already subscribed and liked, what are you waiting for? Join the Skintellectual community so we can chat more about the biology of your beauty, the cosmetic chemistry of products and how they work. And of course, things like this that bring self-care and even some selflessness into skincare. Overall, remember to be beautiful both inside and out, stay hydrated, reapply your sunscreen, and put your money where your morals are. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <laughs> love you guys. Bye.